Complex fill and complex fill with rotation. These two tools are very similar. The difference is that you'll use complex filling if the object assumes one angle for the fill stitching. And it's complex with a rotation if the object is expected to have multiple tilt angles. I got it. Using these tools, they digitize complex shaped objects. For example, puddles, clouds, irregular and regular polygons, etc. The process of creating an object is to outline it along the perimeter. Click on the complex fill icon with the left mouse button. Set the desired fill, for example, tatami. Click on the icon with the left mouse button and choose the color of the future object by clicking the color square on the color panel with the left mouse button. Move the mouse cursor to the work area and create a random number of points by clicking the left mouse button. Notice how a straight line forms between the points. Now create several points by right-clicking the mouse. Curved lines are formed between the points. Now alternately create points using the left and right mouse buttons. Thus, by creating points with the right and left mouse buttons, you can outline an object of any complex shape around its perimeter. If you created points in the wrong place during digitizing, press the backspace key on your keyboard and continue working. To finish digitizing in auto mode without connecting the first and last points, press enter three times. In this case, the program will automatically set the stitch fill angle and also mark the start and end points of the embroidery. This is the simplest way to create object using complex filling tools. Now we will do the same thing, but we won't finish creating the object in automatic mode. Instead, we will press enter once. The object is closed. Look at the bottom panel for hints. The program suggests that we continue digitizing and create holes in our object. We are making a hole. Press Enter. The program prompts us to continue digitizing and create another hole. We decline and press Enter. Now we are asked to define the stitch fill angle point. Click at point A, then drag the cursor to point B, indicating the direction vector. We click on Object Formed. If you enter object editing mode, everything you have done and defined previously can be easily adjusted. By hovering the mouse cursor over the outline and clicking the left or right mouse button, you can add extra points to adjust the shape. You can adjust the angle of the underlay and even change the start and end points of the object embroidery, which are set by default in the program. By the way, this can also be changed. Go to the settings menu. By default, the nearest connection feature is enabled in the program, which determines where it is best to place the start and end points based on existing objects. This is how the program optimizes connections between objects. By disabling this feature, you can set start and end points while creating the object. Create an object and press enter. Press enter again to skip creating the opening and notice on the hint panel that the program asks to define the start point of the stitching. We determine the start and end points, then set the angle of the slope for the fill. The object is ready. Honestly, I'm a case person and I prefer hitting enter three times. And then in the editing process, adjust the angles, entry and exit points and so on. I'll return it later. Your favorite quick connect setting. But in this case, when you know exactly how the object should look, 
The method where you define everything at once will be quite appropriate. Now, a complex fill with rotation. The principle of working with the complex fill with rotation is the same. With the left and right mouse buttons, we create curved or straight segments depending on our imagination or the existing image. The difference is that when completing the formation of the object in automatic mode, you need to press the Enter key five times. Let's sort out the details. We form the object. First, press Enter to close the object. The program then prompts us to create a hole. Create one hole and press Enter twice. Now, the program suggests entering the start point of the object embroidery, then the end point of the embroidery. After that, it is necessary to check the angles of the stitch fill. There can be several, creating the angle of tilt. And press Enter. Object is ready. In edit mode, you can see what you've created and make changes if needed. And if you change your mind during the process of creating an object, press the escape key on the keyboard. Note that both objects can easily and simply be converted one after the other. Select the complex fill object, click on the complex with rotation tool and press enter twice. Select the complex with rotation, choose the complex tool and voila. If you created an object and then realized you need to create a hole in it, there is no need to redo it. For this, there is a special function called add hole. Select the object. Click the lift mouse button on the add hole icon. Move the mouse cursor to the workspace and create a hole or an aperture in the desired object. Once you finish digitizing, press enter. Objects with complex shapes often have mutual filling precisely because of the shape. Uh, as a result, these gaps can form in the object during stitching. To avoid this, the program offers a range of settings. You can access settings either by right-clicking the tool or by double-clicking the object with the left mouse button. These settings do not always work as you would like and deserve a separate explanatory video with examples. So in this video, I'll just briefly explain what is what. Overlaying is adding extra rows to individual segments of the object at the points where cross-filling occurs. We take a complex shaped object. The program has its own algorithm for filling it with stitches. She fills the object so there are no snips or stretches. For this, the embroidery passes along the segment. As a result, we see an opposing fill. Gaps often appear in these areas. Here is how to avoid these gaps. You can use overlap addition. By default, the value is set to one row. To make it clear, I'll apply the maximum number of rows. By the way, we do the same manually by creating objects using the column tool. We place one object under another to prevent shifting during stitching. Of course, such a number of rows is excessive, although who knows, maybe you'll need it someday. In general, three to five rows are often sufficient. The complex fill with rotation has an angle adjustment setting in addition to the overlap. The angle parameters determine how much the filling will overlap with the counter fill. Here it's clearly visible. A typical corner. I understand the principle, but I couldn't achieve the program that shows how it works in application to the filling. The default angle is a setting that activates only if the angle you set cannot be reproduced by the program. This is the fallback option if the algorithms fail. Also, the typical angle can affect the tilt of the reinforcement. And this is exactly what it does very well. If you're not satisfied with the angle of the reinforcement in the complex object with rotation, you can adjust it. Watch right here. 
I think everything is perfectly visible. And tolerance for the run. This is it. When the program, following the algorithm, moves to stitching a new segment, it lays down a line. So, if this line ends up close to the outline, there's a chance that during stitching, the line may go beyond the edge. For instance, when using an uneven edge, you can go in and adjust the distance from the object to the stitch by specifying the needed parameter. It's all clearly shown in the manual here. Honestly, all the time I used the program, I never had to change this particular setting. If you have an example, I would appreciate it if you could send me a file with such an object. That's all for today. Have a great day and happy embroidering.